We're back at HRNHQ, maybe for the last time before we're at Churchill Downs for the rest of the week, to discuss many wagering opportunities, Oaks and Derby Day, but one I'm particularly interested in. It's new to the Kentucky Derby program. It's the $3 all three-year-old pick three at DeRosa with Sarah Albadwe. Sarah, we've seen these bets take a little bit of a toehold. All turf pick three at Keeneland, the triple play at Belmont on Sundays. Now it's a three-year-old $3 pick three on Derby Day, ending with the Derby, and I think it's a good sequence. Absolutely, and I think they're, whatever your opinion is in the Derby, to pair that up with some other of these exactly. exciting races for the three-year-olds, and I really think that that $3 minimum helps these wagers be worth your while. What we're going to do is tell people to like and subscribe. Yes, we'll remember. I'm going to silence my phone. We have another video up that is the Oaks and Derby Double. And my strategy is a little different with this $3 pick three. In the Oaks and Derby Double, I'm very narrow. I have my opinions. It's a two-leg sequence. I'm just going to go hard. And if I'm right, I hope it's a big payday. With the $3 pick three, I think there's different ways you can zig and zag because it starts off with probably the biggest favorite in the sequence in Jack Christopher from the Chad Brown bar. If he's ready to roll, he's going to be tough to beat, but that's a big question in these spots. Absolutely. And going back to a year of 2011, which is one of the first years that I really started paying clear cut attention to the sport every single day. It kind of reminds me of Uncle Mo coming back and the anticipation in the King's Bishop. And we know if he runs his race, even if he doesn't win, everybody's going to be saying, well, he could have won the Kentucky Derby <laughs> or he should have been in that race right. or that kind of buzz around this horse. And that buzz has been there from the beginning with him. I actually did get to see him break his maiden on Travers Day last year. And there was some palpable excitement in the air for his debut where he absolutely put on a show. And then to come back in the champagne stretch out, he is already that greed one winner. If he's ready, he's going to be very tough in here. But that is a big if, and I think if you're trying to beat him, this would be the time to do so. I agree. Uh, I'm going to play different tickets just depending on what other horses I use in the other two legs. I thought number two, Trademark, who's 20 to 1 on the morning line, cutting back in distance, two for two at Churchill. Uh, that intrigued me at a big price. And then number 11, my prankster, probably one of the more logical alternatives to Jack Christopher. But I think no matter what, if you beat the favorite here, you're in good shape. And as we already know in the Derby, I do have some long shot looks. So I'm not adverse to taking the second choice, even when I'm going to be leaning on the favorite in some sequences. But in the, uh, the, the turf race, which we'll get to in a moment, I like some bombs. So I'm OK with Jack Christopher here. He's probably going to be on 60 percent of my tickets. That's fair. I think my one shot to beat him actually comes from the number one horse in Major General instead of for Todd Fletcher, the other Fletcher in being here. <laughs> With my prankster, I kind of wonder if the mile is really what he wants to do. We've seen him be successful more at the six furlong, seven furlong type of distances. This is his second time trying the mile, and he was unsuccessful when facing Jack Christopher last fall. Obviously, a lot of growing up and time to mature since then. He does have that recency edge. But I wonder if this distance is really what he wants, whereas Major General is now cutting back after going the mile in the 16th in the Lexington. If you toss that uh, race on a wet track at Tampa, he has had nothing but first or seconds in his career start. Really big improvement from a figure standpoint last time out in the Lexington. I think that his hand is forced to be a part of the early pace or at least sitting right off of it early from the inside. Ira Ortiz Jr. stays aboard, and I think he's a little bit dangerous. All right. Major General for you is an alternative. Am I right to assume Jack Christopher is the top pick? Oh, of course. Yeah. So five for both of us. Two and 11 for me is an alternative. One for you. The Pat Day Mile is a one-turn mile on the main track. The American Turf. Two turns on the turf for three-year-old second leg of this $3 all three-year-old pick three. And here's where I'm hoping to get a little creative. I like number one, Smoke and Tea, and number eight, Royal Spirit. They're both double digits on the morning line. And I have a trivia question for you. What is the significance of Smoke and Tea to some other opinions we've shared this week? Uh, we already discussed this off camera, and the answer is I don't know, but I'm sure you'll tell me. He was Kathleen O's workmate on April 30th, oh. and uh, from all accounts, uh, some may say he went better. Uh, I had the opportunity to actually talk to the jockey, Declan Cannon, who was aboard smoking tea in that workout for the Shug Barn with Kathleen O, and he 
just said the horse was that good. He not necessarily outwork Kathleen O because that's how she works every time. It seems to be the uh, the buzz around her morning efforts. But this horse in particular, he said, showed up and he's expecting a big effort here. I'm going to take those words and definitely use at a double digit price. And then Royal Spirits, the other one I want with Jack Christopher, who's going to be the chalk. These two are going to be long shots. Royal Spirit gets back on turf. And I think as a big shot to track the Chad Horse Portfolio Company for a start also since, well, Jack Christopher didn't run in the Breeders' Cup. This one did. Uh, figures to be on the front end fresh. I'm going to try to beat it 9-2, to two, one eight for me in the American turf. Interesting. I'm a little bit chalky in here. I do really like the two main event for George Weaver. This horse showed some freaky speed early on. We all kind of expected him to come back, and he just kept on going last time out in the Cutler Bay at Gulfstream Park. And then I'm also going with Side Dog. This is a horse that I have liked really since his maiden breaking score, and it's mostly because of his attitude. He's just so quietly confident and unassuming and very chilled out, and that's kind of the look that I always see perform really well may not always win but at least shows up in races and that's what i always kind of look for in the paddock so i've had my eye on him for a long time i really think that he was totally underestimated last time out when he uh came back off the layoff at keeneland i know that you had brought up some stats about how grim motion was unsuccessful <laughs> opening weekend and he wanted to thank you personally yes, I, for uh his success the reverse that. Jinx. yes absolutely so uh, second start off the layoff, I'm looking for Psydog to show up again for another big performance. He is three for three. He's closed into fast paces, slow paces, different distances, and I think that I'm set with that Ortiz exacta right there with a speed and a closer. Hmm. All right. Uh, I was surprised to see Psydog as a morning line favorite. I don't know if that will actually happen. Certainly going to be one of the ones to take money, though, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, it's a competitive race. I, I like it for that reason. Uh, not necessarily like feel I have it on lock with the two long shots I mentioned, but liking Jack Christopher, it felt good to have some options. And of course, we have plenty of options in the Kentucky Derby. We've been through the race many times with many horses. Uh, I will say, though, different from the Oaks Derby double, where because I'm on Nest and Kathleen O, two of the top choices, I really want to lean on Pioneer of Medina and tis the bomb in that sequence with this three dollar altar pick three a with the three dollar base and b liking some long shots in the middle leg this is where i am going to pepper in a little bit messier epicenter and zandon i think those are the three most likely winners of the race and if you get a 12 15 to 1 and a three dollar pick three into a 20 horse field you're still going to do okay so would you not add in your long shots as well? Oh, no, I am. Okay. Yes. I was just saying, whereas in the Oaks Derby, <laughs> yes. um, only those long shots okay. uh, because I'm with the two, not only say obvious because there's others in there as well, but the two for me, whereas with this $3 pick three, even with Jack Christopher on my main ticket, uh, I feel like, okay, if I get a $30 horse home in the middle, I'm fine with Zandon. That's fair. I think you would have to pick a spot to have some of those long shots in one of these three races. We're both pretty solid on Jack Christopher. I'm a little shocky in the next leg. You're looking for those bombs in there. So I would have to look for some long shots in the Derby to make this worth my while. Uh, I would be looking to charge it. Pioneer Medina is certainly possible. Um, I don't really have a super strong long shot opinion outside of those two, but this isn't a ticket where I'd want to chalk out and go Jack Christopher, Sidog, Zandon. That just right. doesn't create <laughs> that doesn't create anything of uh, significant value. Unless you for went me. straight, I suppose. Unless you went straight and played like I don't know, hundred dollars or something. Well, like ninety nine. Ninety nine. <laughs> or hundred two. Something like that. Um, but if it's if it's straight, yeah, I guess. I, th I think it has to be multiples of three. Oh really? Yeah. All right, for ninety nine ninety nine, which um, is not the cost of this video, it's free. Look at that! Isn't that wonderful? It is. We we're here for the peeps with good information. Uh, so we agree on Jack Christopher, though. Yes. Um, He'll be very tough to beat. He would have to be not. Now, as a visual handicapper, do you feel you get more cues off a layoff because you want to know if they look ready to run, or is it if they're in in the form cycle like? A grade one oaks horse where they run a few times and you sort of have the pattern up to this well i think it's harder on the layoff because you don't see that progression from race to race so it's harder to see what's changing i don't know what he's looked like over the course of the winter going right. into this race i can't tell if he's gotten more fit or not i can remember what i saw from last year but obviously they're going to take a significant jump forward usually from two to three <laughs> in terms of their physicality so you can tell the horse is looking a little soft around the edges and maybe not totally tucked up and needs to race into fitness if it's really dramatic. 
or if you have a much keener eye, but not having seen him all winter long, I don't know that I'll have a significant amount to say unless he's really under the weather, which right. I don't know that Chad would ever send no. out a horse that's not ready to be competing. And I'm encouraged that he's here because, you know, we all know where, where Chad trains and there are some big prizes for three-year-olds, whether they end up stretching them out or a race like the Jerkins on the Travers undercard is a grade one, seven furlongs. Like they don't need to be in this spot to get ready for those races that Chad and that really anyone would want to win. So I see it as a big vote of confidence that he's ready to run here, especially at a mile versus coming back at six or seven furlongs. So yeah, he's he's going to be on most tickets, but you know, between Major General, I wouldn't let him beat me if I'm right in the others. Uh, trade market twenty to one, like oh, some looks to cover some smaller opinions, but Jack Christopher seems to be the one. Absolutely, and I wouldn't blame anybody for just taking him as a single sure. and rolling with it. All right, that is the three dollar all three year old pick three ends in the Derby, starts in the Pat Day Mile, includes the American Turf. We have an Oaks Derby double video as well. I'm sure stuff will come up at the track. Hopefully more videos there. Most definitely. All right. That's it for now. Good luck.